everyone now that 2022 is going to be over by the time this goes live wanted to post the top 10 best fragrances that came out in 2022 in my opinion all of these are just smell really good to me first of all very high quality some of them are on the more challenging side but i'll go over that and either way i don't think anybody around you is going to be wearing any of these i didn't even purposely try to make that a theme but it kind of came out that way so and you get maybe if you're going to like a niche fragrance conference sure but not on an everyday basis so these are not in any order and just going to jump right in first up on Thamara by prin this i always say it smells like a bubbling cauldron in the middle of dark forest with just like dark smoke swirling all around and just surrounded by lava or something just really kind of stunning to smell and i think it's the kind of thing that's totally worth trying whether or not you would like to wear something like that because it's just so interesting intense and evocative Next up, another print one, Okachal, really extreme and very animalic. I promise not all of them on this list are like that by any means, but but yeah, I love it. Very just spicy, smoky, animalic, kind of salty and sweet at times as well. Very intense and another one that's just so interesting and just like nose grabbing, so to speak, and just captivating. Next up, Firewater by Joram Studio, really cool Scottish fragrance house. This is super smoky in a fiery type of way, like not incense or tobacco. The opening to me smells like a sweeter version almost of something like Zoologist Tyrannosaurus Rex, but very, very unique. I've almost never smelled anything that I would even consider close to this, so it's not just like, oh, a fiery scent or something. It's intense, yeah, but if you like like authentic fire type of scents, which I do, then I think that you would like this. Juniper is listed in the notes for this, but it really smells to me more like there's full on like Cade oil in it, which is a lot smokier. And then actually has a sweeter phase in the middle with this osmanthus aspect to it. There's even something like sugar kelp in it, which is like a seaweedish type of thing that makes it, I wouldn't normally think I would like that, but just everything about this is so interesting and also just smells good to me, period, too. And when it dries down, it's almost like Smells like drinking a glass of ginger ale next to a wooden log burning in a fireplace. So kind of just an interesting journey that that one takes you on. Next up, Sense of Wood, Hinoki and Hinoki. One of my favorite, if not my number one favorite, like woodsy scents that I've ever smelled. So rich and deep, but not too dark, not too dry either. There's this very like refreshing vibe to it. And I think if you like Hinoki and or Cypress, absolute must try beautiful bottle cool fragrance house too and just really really nice next up zoologist cockatiel oh i love this this is not something that everybody's going to feel that way about <laughs> that's true for everything on the list but especially because this and another one that's going to be on here right after are ones that are by zoologists but not on their more challenging end these are much more accessible on an everyday basis and for some people that's not a good thing because they like the more interesting ones but I just think this smells so good. There is a bitter green pungency that happens for part of the opening that smells like some kind of green plant I would see on a like hike or something like that if I did that. But there's also like vanilla, raspberry, champagne, and then this kind of like sweet cashmere and vanilla woodsy sort of dry down. And I just find this so, I could just smell it all day. Like I don't even need to wear it. I can just smell it and really, really enjoy it. And that one I would say is unisex, maybe even leaning slightly feminine to some. Next up, Zoologist Cow. Uh, another one that probably even more so than Cockatiel. There's nothing challenging about this at all, really. To some people, it only just smells like green apple shampoo or something, and they don't get the what I do out of it. But there are other people who I've had smell it who really, really like it too. So it's like milky, but not over the top milky. Just I find it just to be such a like relaxing vibe like i was like taking a bubble bath and drinking a milky smoothie in the middle of like a pasture like there's no cow shit type of vibe in here um which you never know with zoologist but yeah it's something that i like to wear on like a sunny day to feel really relaxed or this is like the scent i wear if i go to the dentist because to just feel relaxed and whatever but yeah really really nice and that one also i would say is unisex maybe even leaning slightly feminine next up solstice by fragrance dubois Really fresh, but smells a lot more niche than the typical kind of bright, fresh fragrance. Uh, it has like an edge to it, not a rough edge, but I think maybe like nutmeg or something like that adds some spice. Really intriguing, and it has a lot more depth than I might have thought just looking at the kind of 
fruit and spice type of notes for it or whatever. And it's definitely still very mass appealing, I would say. So it's not the type of niche fragrance where the average person might not think you smell so good when walking by. I think that's unisex leaning masculine, I would say. And yeah, I really, really like that one. It is very pricey. I think that one, definitely hundreds of dollars, potentially even like 400 or something. But I do think that it just really checks off all the boxes for me of being unique, being just smelling good, period. Not something that's going to be, you know, worn by everybody around you. Something that people will think smells good on you. So yeah, I like that one a lot. Next up, Monoliths and Dimensions by Phronema. So well done. Just amazing take on that kind of like woodsy, smoky, amber labdanum resinous, you know, sort of genre. Kind of like Chanel Le Leon. Not that I'm saying this is just like that, but that sort of a genre really well blended so say that you aren't a fan of some of the notes in here for example that i don't usually like most types of sandalwood oud patchouli often ambergris but you might still totally like this even if you're like me and not a big fan of those because it's just yeah so well blended it's like smooth and also kind of thick at the same time so notably high quality and if you again like those type of like slightly smoky amber labdanum scents i think this is absolutely a must try Next up, Estancia by DSH Perfumes. Mm, so good. This is definitely more on the challenging animalic side. Smells like, to me, the idea of like riding a horse through wild desert lands. There's definitely a barnyard animalic aspect to it, but at the same time, I feel like it's really captivating. It's not like oud style barnyard, it's like literal barnyard. Like maybe it's nostalgic for any time I've been near a farm type thing or something. I actually could see this coming across even as sexy though, and there's like a boozy tequila aspect to it. So a lot of things that I normally wouldn't like, but just like, yeah, badass like cowboy in the kind of like Southwest type of thing is what I picture from it. Um, but yeah, just this smoky booziness done perfectly with the animalics here. And then lastly, Ponderosa by Pineward. This is such a unique and interesting combination of like sort of gourmand adjacent, but also like deeply authentic coniferous forest. Pinewood are known for their very, yeah, like authentic foresty type of scents. And some people, when this came out, I think often before even trying it, saw the notes which had like butterscotch and cinnamon and maybe strawberry or something like that, as long with like, you know, the foresty stuff. Thought like, oh, this is just gonna be too sweet, this and that. And I would have maybe thought that too, but the butterscotch and cinnamon notes really bring out that kind of like natural, resinous, fresh sweetness of the Ponderosa needles. And it does not, I would say this is way more foresty than it is gourmand. So while those notes may look like that's how it would be, it actually is very much something that you do not need to like gourmands at all to enjoy. I honestly might not have even guess that some of those notes were in here if I didn't know. They just work so well with everything. It almost smells like it would be like wood from a maple tree or something. Just so high quality, so natural smelling. And that's true of pretty much any pinewood scent, but of the ones they released this year. This was my favorite and I like that it kind of took a chance and went in a little bit of a different direction but still kept that like core spirit of Pineward. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'd love to know anybody else's favorites that came out this year. Obviously I didn't try everything but I did try at least several hundred that came out in 2022 alone and these were for me the top 10. Maybe I'll do a separate video or something of like top five designers or like some on the more affordable side but if I'm just talking about the ones that I would really put on a top 10 list that was uh, this.